what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of mingle with me your girl brown if this is your first time clicking on my video what's up i'm glad that you stopped by to join me please consider joining the community here I love to do a little bit of everything. I love to keep it real with y'all and I love to educate y'all. So yeah, that's what I do over here. But today's video is definitely dedicated to my new parents. When I say my new parents, I'm not really talking to my brand spanking new parents, but my new school age parents. So if you have a child that is entering into pre-k kindergarten or first grade or something like that pretty much school age this video is for you also not only that if you are a parent that is concerned about the delay that your child may have with their speech please stay tuned i am definitely talking to you so one thing I've noticed at work is, you know, I have a lot of parents coming in and out. Some move from out of state, some just move to the other side of town. One thing that I really keep my mind stayed on is making sure that these children have a smooth transition into coming to my campus. Oftentimes parents will leave information off on their registration documents, but it's still up to me to make sure that when those families come in my office that I am also observant as well as open and just being plain hospitable to them. So for my parents who have children who have a speech delay, I am gonna tell you how you can get a speech referral from your child's doctor and possibly be able to get a speech language pathologist at your child's school to help them work on bettering their speech. The first thing that you will need to do is as a parent, after you know having your child, being around your child and just observing your child with you as well as their peers, do you realize or have some concerns that your child isn't speaking? If so, you can go to your child's doctor and let them know of your concerns. Your child's doctor may ask you to come in so that they can evaluate your child. This evaluation may take up to an hour or two hours for the doctor to just observe your child, see what they know, see what they don't know, see if they comprehend words, maybe do a hearing test, see if they can hear, because also if your child can't hear, it will affect and delay them from speaking. Once you get to the doctor, please, please, and hear me clearly, because I know a lot of people like to have pride. If you are already have a concern with your child and you go to the doctor, be honest. That's what you're already there for. You don't want to go to the doctor and they ask you, okay, what's going on with your child? And you're like, oh, nothing, they're fine. No. Johnny is four and he ain't said that. -da. So that is a concern. So once you get your child to the doctor, please make sure to be honest with the doctor about where your child is at. Once your child doctor has observed your child and if they have the same concerns, they may refer you to a speech language pathologist, which is also known as a SLP. Once you are at the speech language pathologist, they may ask you to fill out a set of forms. Normally those forms are gonna be for the parents where they ask about the history of both mom and dad. Being completely honest will help the doctor or the speech language pathologist in deciding a diagnosis for your child. So please, again, be very honest. You wanna help your child, not hurt your child. Also, don't be shocked if the speech language pathologist asks to see how the child interacts with you. They wanna see if the child is gonna talk to you or if they're gonna point to things or if they're gonna, you know, cry to express themselves. So they may ask you to get a little more involved than just sitting back signing forms. So be prepared. When doing this, the speech language pathologist is observing the child's ability to listen, to comprehend, to speak, to observe, to play all of the above they trying to see what's going on because remember you live with the kid they don't they only get to see them for from a window of one to two hours so they want to see what's going on 
speech language pathologists will work on the following with your child. Expressive language. How your child expresses themselves through words. Receptive language. Does your child understand what's being told to them? Can they understand verbal directions? The speech language pathologist will also work on articulation. Producing sounds with letters, how they articulate, use their mouth. They will also work on fluency with your child. Do they stutter? Do they stammer? Are they a little delayed? Are they saying all the letters? Are they cutting off endings of words? They will also work on voice with your child. The loudness, the tone, as well as the pitch. Last but not least, it may also be more, but this is what I know, they also work on auditory processing. Is your child able to process what's being told to them? If I give your child a marker and there's a paper and I say, okay, go ahead and put a check mark next to all of the shoes that you see on the paper. And they just looking at me. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna work with your child on that as well. Once the evaluation is over, don't be afraid. Just know that there are people out here that are going to help you. So once everything is done, the speech language pathologist or your child's doctor will talk to you. They will go over everything and see what the diagnosis will be for your child and ways to get them other resources and better help. So mom and dad, once you have done all of that, you've taken your child to the doctor, they have referred you, and let's just say the speech language pathologist agrees with you and they do give you a referral for speech therapy. Be sure to come back to my channel so that I can give you further information on how your child may possibly qualify to get speech therapy from the school for maybe an hour. In my district, we have offered an early childhood special education program, which is ECSE for children who are three years old to five. Um, we take them in, we do the whole, once you have your referral, this is just a way for them to kind of get ahead of pre-K and kindergarten, start to learn the schedule and routines around schools. Because if you're not able to verbalize you're not going to be able to tell anyone that you have to go to the restroom um once you get into school you there are rules you do have to follow rules and if at home you're not talking you probably might get your way and then at school it's just best for them to come in and learn a routine with teachers who are certified in helping special education but children yes. It's baby steps, right? So make sure to come back and mingle with me and I will let you guys know how you can get your child into public school at the age of three. Not, pre not pre-K three, I'm not talking about pre-K four. This is specifically for my parents who have children who have speech delay, special education, autism disorder, and much more. But today I'm specifically speaking to my parents who are concerned about speech delay. Other than that, I enjoy sharing this information with you guys. Please remember to come back, mingle with me, subscribe down below, like, comment, all of that good stuff. I'll see y'all next time.